Morning. Anyhow, Monday morning, uh, figured I'd drive around and see if it was going to be dry enough to get the excavator out and clean out some ditches. And well, I don't know if you can tell by the mud stuck to the windshield, but I absolutely buried the pickup to the frame. So the answer was no, no, it's not dry enough quite yet. Um, so we're, we're headed back to the farm to go find something else to do today. And I'm not sponsored by them, but I will say uh, I got a Yankum rope, or I got I got two of them now. Uh, one is a uh, great big two inch or two and a half inch diameter. Uh, I'm using that on the tractors and stuff, but the other one, like is a one inch rope and got it for pickups and stuff. And that thing I'd never used before up until today. And that thing's awesome because you could feel it when it finally pulled tight. I told Michael just hammer the other pickup because it was a three quarter ton as well. And it was, it, it was basically, I was pegging it off the rev limiter to get it out because it was hung up in the process of getting back there too. So I ended up just taking it through the field because the field was drier than the road going back to where I was hung up at. I was actually hung up on a grass lane and uh, I was pegging the GMC off the rev limiter trying to get it out, and I got it out, barely. But uh, that Yankum rope, when it finally caught, this truck just popped right up out of it. So those kinetic ropes, although they're not exactly cheap, I think they're well worth the money, because we didn't tear anything up, and it got us out, so. And I was, I was on the frame, so. Yeah, it was fun. Michael's hauling the last two or three loads of corn out today with the Willinga vac. Um, got the excavator on the gooseneck trailer, which looks a little goofy because the gooseneck is also on the Volvo, but the Volvo is going to handle that gooseneck way better with that skid steer or with that uh, excavator on there than a pickup is, um, just because it weighs way more. Uh, these pickups have plenty of power to pull them just stopping them i like it better with the uh with the semi on it so um gonna run that up to one of my rental farms and start cleaning out some ditches today and uh that's really it that's all i got so be some footage of that i guess so as you can see yeah i mean it looks a little goofy with the gooseneck on a semi but uh, it works well, so Anyhow, I want it up to the rental farms Or one of the rental farms I should say I'm Gonna go Clean out some ditches that have just silted in year after year after year Kind of been neglected and Well, we're gonna go take care of that So essentially what I'm gonna be doing this entire time is there's this creek here and it runs that direction and what happens is it gets out a lot. In fact, it was out just a few weeks ago. Um, it was pretty well to the bottom of that bridge almost. Um, what happens is it deposits a bunch of silt. And so what has happened is the closer you get to this creek in the field, it's actually sloped like this instead of like this. So you would think the water would run into the creek, but it actually doesn't because there's been so much silt deposited that it actually slopes up right before the creek. Therefore, it blocks a lot of water from getting out of the field. This is probably the biggest example of it right here. As you can see, all this water backed up because there's a big pile of silt there. So essentially what I'm going to do is there's several ditches in this field. Um, I farm all the way back to where those trees are way, way, way back there. And uh, there's several ditches in this field that are just silted in towards the end like this. So I'm just going to dip them out with a ditching bucket and... Uh, I should get a lot of water out of the field. So little by little, we're gonna puck away at it. I'd say that one was successful. We've got water flowing to the creek now, so chalk that one up as a win. That was easy enough. Oh yeah, that's much, much better. Um, really, I'm not even gonna bother digging this out all the way up to here. Um, water's flowing out of it. It was just the last, 20 30 feet here was really silted in so 
got that cleared out and we should be good to go now okay so this ditch was so silted in that culvert pipe there was pretty well half full of dirt um, you can see the sand and silt there that's been silting us in but uh, dug it out fairly deep all the way down um, well all the way down to the culvert on the other end of the field so uh, that took a while moved quite a bit of dirt that's probably five or six foot deep I would say all the way down camera doesn't really pick it up very well but anyhow I'm gonna call that a day I didn't get near as much done as I would have liked to but it's slow going uh, moved a lot of dirt most of these ditches are not gonna be um, that bad where I've got to dig out you know six foot of dirt most of them I'm taking out six inches maybe a foot or two but shouldn't have any more that I'm taking out that much dirt so the rest of them should go fairly quick but that took a while and for those that know well you know but the smell of this dirt being fresh and turned over that really makes me fired up for spring won't be long we'll be out here uh with a finisher and all this is actually going into uh corn this year and not just any corn but it'll be white corn so we'll see how that goes but anyhow i think i'm gonna call it good for a day morning there's michael on his way to robinson unfortunately i'm on my way to lawrenceville because i've got to pay taxes today i'm not a fan of paying taxes i think taxation is theft for the most part but you know it's whatever just wish that they spent my tax money a little more efficiently i guess but it is what it is anyhow let's not get political let's go pay taxes well the tax appointment went well i uh didn't have to pay hardly any taxes and i ended up getting a return so uh well, I already spent the tax return. I stopped at Alliance Tractor in Vincennes on my way home, kind of-ish. And, uh, well, we got a 45-foot crumble or a rolling basket, whatever you want to call it, for behind the finisher now, so, yeah. Well, between the finisher and the rolling basket back there, this is one heck of a gigantic rig now. 9380, 42-foot finisher and a 45 foot crumbler back there so it's gonna be a really fun rig to run though i'm guessing that me and michael are gonna have to play rock paper scissors on who gets to do this because i gotta lie i'm looking forward to it as cool as the steiger in the rolling basket is unfortunately it's still uh pretty sloppy out so we're gonna throw some fuel in this and continue digging ditches today if she starts okay there we go okay let that warm up while we throw some fuel in now that we've got fuel and grease there's one more very important thing to do and that's uh put in our air pods because the radio in this isn't worth a crap it picks up like two stations and barely at that so air pods it is now here's the ditch we dug yesterday so it's got water all the way to the end of it so it's mostly on grade, probably. I don't know. Time will tell. We'll see. And some of these ditches aren't too bad, and as long as I don't get hung up, this is gonna work well, but I'm just using the track right now, actually, to just track down through here and clean it out. And so far, it's working really, really well. So it's a poor man's ditcher, I guess, but uh, down here at the end, we're gonna have to dig some out because it all stops, but for the most part, I think this is going to clean the majority of this one out without having to go through and dig it all. It's got water flowing behind me, so I'm going to call that good.
morning. Guess what we're doing? That's right. We're back to digging holes. Now today we got the skid steer down here too. Uh, there's a bunch of old concrete culverts down here that are honestly just sitting in the weeds and not being used. So we're throwing them in a couple of the ditches that I've dug. That way we can still cross them for the time being. And then eventually we will uh, have tile on all this this fall, but we don't have time to put it in right now whatsoever. Um, honestly, a lot of these ditches that I'm digging are just the main ditches that are gonna, they're gonna stay open ditches anyways. Uh, a couple of them that I'm digging, we are gonna tile instead of leaving an open ditch, but for the most part, these bigger ditches that I am digging, uh, they're gonna have to stay open ditches just because if they don't, there's nowhere for the tile to run, so. I don't like doing that, but it is what it is, so. Michael's over there in the skid steer carrying culverts and I'm tracking it around so I can flip them into the ditch with this and cover them up. So this is what they are. They're just concrete culverts and they're chipped and everything else, but they're good enough for government work. So we're gonna use them. Not much excitement today, just digging ditches and <laughs> making creek crossings that aren't exactly crossable <laughs> oh boy he came down here this is really no place to bring a pickup whatsoever as muddy as it is and i would not be surprised if i get a phone call to come pull him out um, it is extremely muddy you can see water standing everywhere down here but i needed fuel so we took a chance and ran the pickup down here and we made it and i'm full of fuel so He's lighter now than when he came in because he got plenty of fuel off the truck. So, yeah, full sends only. The GMC and semi are way up there. The skid steer is somewhere right up there. We've moved a lot of dirt today, but uh, we still have plenty more to move. So this here is going to be a satisfying bucket to take out. And there we go. And away goes the water. Lots and lots of it backed up on this farm. Really no reason for it at all other than the fact that it's been neglected for years and years. And I've farmed it a few years, so that's partially my fault. But, uh, well, we're fixing that, so. The way the water goes. This has all been ditched before. It's just not been cleaned out in years, so. There's been a ditch down through here, but it was so silted in that hardly any water was running through it. So we got water flowing now. Life's good. Well, that thing is absolutely filthy and it's started to rain now, but I got from way down there into those trees dug all the way up to around the bend of those trees and all the way up to where my truck is sitting dug today so um i'm pretty sure i could run that thing in my sleep now probably will be tonight um but we got water flowing um i did make a couple divots here just so water in the field could get out since this stuff's all piled up uh the finisher i forget what brand it even is i think it's a kent but the finisher behind the Steiger, uh, it'll level most of this up. It might take two or three passes, but should do the trick. I am going to bring a couple culverts down here so I can get into this backfield. Uh, there was one in it, but it was completely full of mud. Like I said, this has just been silted in for years and really neglected. So now that it's cleaned out, um, should see some improvements for sure but got lots of water flowing as you can see um it's all going in the right direction so that's good but it won't take much of a culvert here at all to get into this backfield but i mean basically this ditch had silted into the point that it was pretty well level with the field so any low spot in the field it would just hold water which is definitely not what you want so 
Uh, it, at the very least, I dropped the water level two feet, you know, but it is flowing and it's flowing good and it's flowing to the creek. So, you know, all this water would have ended up there eventually. We're just getting it there a little faster. So uh, I will be able to tile this too. Um, I'll keep this good and cleaned out. A lot of my tile mains, I'm just going to run straight into the creek. Uh, I doubt that I run any mains or any lines whatsoever into this ditch here just because it's going to continue to silt in every year and your tile lines would just end up full of mud. Uh, you'd need a lot bigger ditch for that, I would think. So all my tile is going to be running right into the creek. It won't be running into these ditches, but... We've got water flowing, so I'm happy to see that. It's time to pack up and get out of here. It's supposed to get quite a bit of rain tonight, so. Been hitting it hard the last few days trying to get this job done. That way, uh, well, it's not gonna get any drier when it's raining like it is, so. Uh, here's a really good example, that whole grass patch right there. Uh, that makes absolutely zero yield every year. Uh, it, typically you don't even get a crop that comes up in it let alone grows to produce anything so um, that's a really good example that will be drying out now um, I am gonna take the after I come in here with the finisher I'm gonna come down here with a PTO ditcher and cut a couple little ditches run into a few spots like that um, but should dry this farm out this 120 acre field here so it's a it's really good dirt it's just really poorly drained so in a dry year it always does really really well and in a wet year it's uh it's laughable so hopefully doing this you know i would gamble i i would honestly say on the conservative side i probably will gain 50 bushel an acre on corn yield down here um, and that's honestly a safe bet. I'm, I wouldn't even be surprised to say I'm gonna gain 75 and 100 bushel in places down here. Um, it's really good dirt. It's typically like 160, 170 bushel corn down here, but in the spots that are actually well-drained, it's well over 200, so. Um, being conservative at 50 bushel an acre, $6 corn, that's $300 an acre, which is considerable, especially over 120 acres. So uh, definitely worth the time to spend a little bit of time down here with the excavator. I'm just walking down here and making sure it's making it all the way to the creek. But uh, all in all, it's flowing the right direction. So we should be good to go and I'm cooking dinner to finish the day out today.